Missouri wide receiver Luther Burton the third is coming for the wide receiver one title for the 2025 NFL draft class. Is he the best receiver in the class? We're gonna talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL draft, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson. You can find the follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a senior draft analyst, and thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. You know I got to kick this intro to Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at the talent code. Keep talking to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 National Champ, man. And what? The other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, man. I want to say shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, DP. We are back in the scout notebook. Yes, back-to-back days with top-tier prospects. We are getting to potential wide receiver one, Luther Burton from Missouri. Then we're getting to the transfer for Colorado. Could be Shador Sanders' number one target, Mr. Will Shepard. And then we're going to wrap this thing up with DP. Probably a dames dude. He went deep diving, man, with wide receiver Donovan Cully, yes, a wide receiver nobody's talking about. So, yes, this is a DP specialty right here. But, DP, before we get started, man, why don't you hit him with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Luther Burden the third. Listed at 5'11", 208 pounds. And Keith, he's coming off a pretty successful season after, you know, in terms of a sophomore leap with those Missouri Tigers. Uh, 86 receptions, uh, 1,212 receiving yards, and nine total touchdowns. Keith, is this young man off of the deep dive? First question I have, do you believe he is worth the hype? And is he a lock for a top 10 pick? That's two very good con- questions, DP. Um, <laughs> you put me on the spot at the very beginning of this, man. Uh, question one, is he worth the hype? I think he is. I think he is at this point. Secondly, is he a top 10 lock? I'm not sure of that, DP. I think this is a very skilled, very talented wide receiver. Um, what I've seen, and I'll, I'll throw out the comp and just get this thing going um, right off the tape. Um, who I've seen was Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, and I think they're probably very comparable from a body type perspective. As far as Luther Burton is listed at 5'11", 208, I think Jackson Smith was worth probably 6'1", or 6 foot, I'm sorry, probably around 210 pounds. Um, and the reason that I, I see that in the game is that these are two very slot-dominant wide receivers. Um, they, they like playing, you know, being in the slot, whether that's a two-by-two two situations or a three-by-one. Um, They're going to line up as that number two guy, three guy. Um, And then they operate off of a lot of, option routes right or the slot fades and 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 th- i don't mean that as a knock i mean that as painting the picture of where they're lying and this is a guy and the reason why i say that is because i don't i see good athleticism i see a fluid player i see a guy that understands how to get open i see a guy that is very nuanced and route running if you talk about buying explosiveness i think it is good right so high level Echelon. I don't know if I see the Malik neighbors if we just use a recent comparison, right? I don't know if I see that type of explosion. I do see a guy that is very detailed, that has good hands, that has ball tracking, that has ability to adjust to the football in the air. Um, you know, run after the catch ability is good, really good contact balance. He's a fighter, he's a rapper. Um, but and, and also I'll say this even versatile alignment, they line this guy up at running back, um, and, and, and get him it's very they they manufacture production for him. Find a way to get up in their playmaker's hands, which is, you know, smart. But then also as talent evaluators, right, we have to kind of identify them being able to win one-on-one match. Um, him on the outside, like I said, I think he has good speed, but question, will he be able to pull it away from high athletes? So I think this is a good running back, DP. I mean, I say good running back. I'm sorry, good wide receiver. He's from time to time. But I, the, the best I had to this point was Jackson. And Jigba, because I think they're probably going to profile 
particular as far as body height and then also the slot and then i think at some point people are going to play for three wide receiver for four wide receiver, or a low five wide receiver yeah, I think that that's that was going to be my question about him too. You know, when I watched him, outstanding player, like you said, route running, nuance. He does play, you know, and, and cook a lot in the slot, similar to Jackson Smith and Jigma, Malik Neighbors. I thought about Jordan Addison a little bit um, from a frame standpoint and everything, and how he was able to win a lot in the slot, route running, yeah, tempo. But I, I think Burton's stronger than him, though. Yeah, Jordan was like six foot one seventy five, so that's why I want to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, I, he's probably about thirty pounds heavier. That, that's why it's. But the Malik Neighbors comp, I could see that because of the body type. But I think the most accurate is, is probably going to be um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. And so the question is, you asked at the very top, right? Will he go in the first round? I'm like, I'm yes, he will go in the first round. Will he be a top ten pick? question mark we'll have to see how the, the rest of this wide receiver class roll out because i think what we didn't have any wide receivers go what in the top 18 19 20 picks of that draft and then it was what quentin johnston jackson jigba jordan addison they all just went back to back to back right um so i i could very well see him going at 15 to 25 ish range if if people continue to have questions about how fast is he and is he only a slot alignment player that's that's what I was going to ask too. Is like you know, looking at his game, if does he need to play outside more in 2024 and produce out there to kind of alleviate some of the concerns? Because at the end, I mean, we talked about it, right? Like the, the same thing about being a nickel corner. That's not bad anymore, right? That's not a knock on you anymore if you're a nickel. Like teams are in nickel 75 percent of their snaps, so you that means you're a starter. You know what I mean? Same thing with being. Uh, a guy playing on the inside more than playing on the outside, right? You know what I mean? Like, same thing with, with Malik Neighbors. We talked about it. Almost a 1,000 of his 1,500 yards came from the slot. But at the same time, explosive, dynamic, outstanding player is all about wh- how can he win and how can you maximize the way that he wins from a coaching staff standpoint. But does, in your opinion, does he? Does Luther Burton need to play outside more in 2024? Um you know, especially with the SEC growing bigger and a lot more bright lights, does he need to play on the outside more to kind of solidify himself as a potential top 10 type of receiver? I think talent evaluators and people like ourselves, right, um, NFL draft analysts, are going to want to see him play outside more just to feel better about where we place him. It's the Marvin Harrison Jr. conversation, right? It's the, the more you can the higher your stock can elevate, right? Like, and, and it's it's no knock, like you said, right? Slot wide receivers, they're productive. You know, they are big. They're really impactful. They do a whole bunch of things. So it's not it's not knocking them in that standpoint. When you're talking about going in the top five, top ten, those you will hope that those are your more complete guys as far as they can do every single thing. Um, it's not just wide receivers. It's corners, right? I want the guy. I'm taking him top ten. He better be able to play cover three, cover two, and play press man by his dog on self and be on the island, right? So. It's just going to be that conversation around around Luther Burton, but I I think he is a very talented prospect. It's just going to be fun. What do people? What bucket do they put him in? And then even the comps. I'm going to be more like more excited to see what comps continue to roll out for Luther Burton. But DP, listen, man, we got to go to Colorado talk about one of Shador Sanders' upcoming targets transfer from Vanderbilt, Mr. Will Shepard. I remember watching him last. year. Stanley. Um, could this be a situation where he's in a really good spot and has the opportunity for explosive draft stock? So we're going to talk about Mr. Will Shepard, the Colorado transfer coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Guys, summertime means baseball, the NBA finals, and so much more. And you can bet on it all on FanDuel. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. With any winning $5 bet, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets. That's $200 that you can use at your disposal to bet on everything from finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Guys, you can absolutely enjoy these type of winnings and earnings. But how? Let me help you. All you need to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list because FanDuel is America's number 
one sports book. Colorado's transfer wide receiver, Will Shepard, coming over from Vanderbilt, leaving the SEC, now going to the Big 12 with the Pac-12 being no longer a thing. Listen to this, 6'3", a buck 98, 198 pounds. F quick notes that I wrote down on a quick twitch uh, from the lower body, really sudden mover with his footwork, a uh, good route runner. I love his ability to hop high point, play with body control, and the hand-eye coordination is an outstanding ball tracker and adjustment maker with the ball in flight. Really uh, a, more of a long strider in terms of straight line speed. Uh, once he gets out in open field uh, after the catch, he just opens up that stride and he can start to move and pull away from guys. Uh, love how he attacks the ball, uh, you know, in front of him, you know, away from his frame, being able to pl uh, play through uh, contact and contest with impressive ability. He's and his ability to, like I said, to adjust on passes that are not accurate, right? You see, like the, the catch radius in the red zone. He is a guy that plays at it. And I love what I love about this. He does play at his own pace. You're not you're really gonna see him sped up, right? Like he plays to his game. So he will he'll kind of like a like a ball handler in the NBA or basketball, right? You think about the Luka Doncic, like no, does Luka Dribble as fast as Kyrie Irving? No. Will Luca break some ankles? 100%. You know what I mean? Because it's like he'll slow play you, and then he catches you with a step back. Now he created three feet of separation for his jumper. And it's the same type of thing with Will Shepard where he knows how to tempo and use his body, and next thing you know, he foot fires you and breaks away from you, and he creates you know, pretty good separation. Where he struggles or where you're going to see some drawback on him is – the vertical ability. So it, even though he has, he's 6'3", about 200 pounds, you're going to worry about, okay, can he be that vertical threat on the island at X? Because he doesn't have that or that, that good to great um, explosiveness and speed. I think he's good once he opens his stride, but it's that instant speed. Is it there? No, I don't. I don't think that is there for him. I think he's more of a nuance. He's a more. He, he's more controlled, and he makes you play at his pace and at his time. And then uh, against press, I just want to see him like he uses his hands. But I just want to see him dislodge and not got encounter guys quicker and get into his routes quicker. He shows his ability to do that, but sometimes he can get a little hung up. So he might be somebody when you look at and he does, but he'll play in the slot. He will play the Z. He plays a lot outside. But overall, watching Will Shepard, I'm excited to see him with, with Colorado, mainly because to, to, to have the year he had last year, 47 receptions, 684 yards, eight total touchdowns in the SEC as the wide receiver one for Vanderbilt, the quarterback play was not great. It was just okay. It was just adequate. Now you put him in Colorado – <clears throat> with um, I think it's Pat Shermer's the OC, so it's gonna be a pro style system. And having Shador Sanders, who's one of the most, one of the more, if not one of the most accurate quarterbacks in college football, guys, I'm excited to see Will Shepard how he fits into this wide receiver room because they have a ton of talent there. But I think there's gonna be a day two pick that can come in and make some plays for an offense. Yeah. So what's the ceiling for Will? Shepard? Um, do you think he can be a back end of the first round guy? Because I mean, we've seen guys that last year in the sign Ricky Pearsall was not of that ilk, right? Like we were not talking about Ricky Pearsall as a round one wide receiver. So can he sneak into the back with more production, right? And that's part of what we do. We gotta we gotta look at situations, right? He's at Vanderbilt. We know Vanderbilt is the back end of the SEC, right? It's not a lot of advantageous situations. Now I feel like he goes to a more advantageous situation as far as the potential for production because of having a guy like Shador Sanders getting the football. So I would, you know, you talk about over-unders, right? Do you just bet the over that he's going to crack 1,000 yards, right? If everything goes well and he stays healthy, this guy can crack 1,000 yards, and then where do we put him as a guy that's 6'2", 6'3", right under 200 pounds, and that shows to be a fluid mover? Yeah, I, I think, you know, after seeing Ricky Pearsall go back into the first, Keith, I think like Kevin Garnett said years ago, anything is possible at this point. You know what I mean? And, and we both love Ricky, but we didn't expect him to go back into the first or back into the first of the team he went to. You know what I mean? To San Fran either. So I do think that, of course, there's always an opportunity. And this wide receiver class is uh, it's shaping out to be a, a pretty good class. 
Um, and there's going to be room for guys to move around the rankings based on how they play in 2024. So, yeah, I think there's a chance. I, right now I'm ha- I have them as a day two pick. I think that second to ter- third round is going to be that sweet spot with this being such a defensive heavy draft. We'll see how teams prioritize wide receivers, how many teams actually need wide receivers after the class we just like finished with in 2024. So uh, for the 2025 class you know, draft, I think there's a, ch- a chance for him to move up the draft board for a lot of teams. Like you said, fluid mover, love how, how quick, quick and sudden his footwork is and his feet are in the contact window, understands how to you know snap and break and sink his hips at the top of routes, and, and, you know what I mean, and, and, and get open against zone, beat man-to-man coverage. Like I said, the main thing is like, okay, how do you counter when DBs align inside to force you outside because they know they can run with you? But then at the same time, I'll say – that back shoulder fade is always going to be there because he's so good at – because he's he plays at a, a, a his own speed, but he's under control like the entire rep to where you see some guys that are running full speed to where if you try to throw the back shoulder, they have to slam on brakes. Like, and it's like, well, we don't have the best shocks on this car. So I don't have the same type of brakes you have to be able to stop – as I'm running four three right now. I'm running 20 miles per hour down the field. You want me to stop on a dime and come back to the ball where he's at top speed, but he's at top speed under control to where when this quarterback does throw that back shoulder fade, he can kind of stop, pivot, and work back to the sideline and make that make that catch while the defender is now trying to stop their momentum and grasping for grasping for his jersey or for air uh, so that they can stay in phase in that situation. I can't remember which game it was, but they they threw uh, kind of a back shoulder kind of fade in the red zone, in the low red, and the DB was in perfect position, chest to chest. You know what I mean? They're both looking back for the ball. He's in position if that ball is thrown to like helmet or high, like right there on the, on the Will Shepard. But the quarterback threw it more so towards the front pylon, and all he did was pivot his body, transition and turn and swiveled and made a play on the ball. So. That's where he's going to be able to win. I wouldn't be surprised if some teams look at him as, as a slot because of his route running, because of his suddenness and ability to work the middle of the field and then catch radius. So you think about those deep over routes, those 10, 12 yard in cuts or against zone Keith. Like he would, he would absolutely eat with a Brock Purdy, a guy that wants to throw those type of timing and rhythm throws or you know you think about minnesota what they're going to have with jj mccarthy they need a wide receiver three behind justin jefferson and jordan addison and things of that nature the detroit lions could use a guy like this where again he's working that middle 10 12 13 yards down the field at in cut and you and you throw it to that spot over those underneath defenders he's gonna be able to make that play in front of those safeties and things like that like and he's tough too because i think it was against florida they tried to press him and he, you know, fought, he played physical, got through it. But not only did he make the catch, he made a kind of a spinning catch, came down on his feet, kept his balance, and then took it to the house for a touchdown. And I think it was against one of our guys that we, we liked last year, Jason Marshall, um, you know, for Florida and everything. So a talented corner who's a good athlete, you know what I mean? So this is a guy that I think is underrated uh, coming into summer scouting that when I saw that he made the move to Colorado, I was like, okay, this could be – a really big move for his draft stock because now you go out there and produce with Shador Sanders and you're getting accurate, high quality passes on target, on rhythm in a lot of different locations. And again, going into a pro style system, I think this could benefit his draft stock. Um, right now I have him as a top of the third round uh, player, but I wouldn't be shocked if he moved into the second round. And if he has a big year that, and then goes out there and tests pretty decent, especially with his vertical jumps and, you know, agility drills, things like that, the combine and pro day, he might be able to work himself in like, like Ricky Pierce all did into that back into the first round range. Okay. Hey, I, I like that, man. We, we, we are coming in hot with the scout notebook, DP. Let's keep this thing going, man. With a guy that you say, right. And nobody talking about Mr. Indiana wide receiver, Donovan McCulley, man. And I know if you put him in a scout notebook, I really feel like you like him a little bit. So we're going to have this conversation, man, about a talented Indiana wide receiver, Mr. Donovan McCulley. Cully coming up next. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. 
six five, two hundred plus pounds, two hundred and five pound wide receiver from Indiana, Donovan McCulley. Uh, in, in 2023, 48 receptions, 644 receiving yards, and six total touchdowns. And you know, one of these Big Ten teams where you're looking at the quarterback situation and you're like, ah, this isn't the best, right? Like it's uh it's okay. And, and you know, that's a, that's the best way to put it. It's okay. Uh, but it could absolutely be better. This is a big, tall receiver that knows how to dominate at the catch point. This is a, a low red zone, just a red zone weapon through and through a guy that, you know, you just want to, you want to play basketball with him, Keith. Like, you want to you want to throw that alley you once you get inside the twenty. You want to get them isoed against the corner. I I wouldn't be surprised if teams you know you know I would love to see him more in the red zone in twenty twenty four in the slot to kind of play that um to, to run that slot fade and things like that. Uh, I think that would be big in terms of getting him from the outside inside against some smaller nickel corners and then throwing that jump ball. Man, at six five, his leaping ability, the hand eye coordination, and then the hand strength. I can't remember which game I was watching, but he can't. He went like they threw a um, they threw a fade to him, and you just see that the arm length, the wingspan, just so dominant at the catch point. He's got the defender on his back hip, and he just reaches out with one hand like the Jordan logo, and just snatches it out the air. And I'm just like, yo, all right, this is this this is some unfair type stuff. But I think he's he's a pretty decent athlete from what I saw. A guy that you know is he the most fluent hips not necessarily but for again he's six five and one thing i've learned through scouting keith is that i'm not expecting a six five receiver to run routes like a five ten receiver you know what i mean when you start having (laughs) unrealistic expectations 100 you start expecting that you're like listen man you're knocking a guy for something that he physically shouldn't be able to if listen when julio jones at six four six three could run routes like antonio brown that's how you knew he was different and it was like, okay, that's just the icing on top of the cake, man. Like, but I shouldn't expect that from everybody. And a name that came to my mind, a couple of names came to my mind. I thought about Hakeem Butler when he was coming out of Iowa. I think it was Iowa State. Uh, I thought about Palexico Burris in terms of body types. You know, who uh-huh. played for the for the, the uh, Steelers and the Giants, and you know, Cortland Sutton, another big six four, big body wide receiver, At Perry. Um, Marquise Colston came to mind. He's just kind of a throwback name from, from your neck of the woods, right? Uh, from yeah. Hofstra. That's, some, that's uh, you know what I'm saying? That's some interesting name pools, DP, when you think about those guys, um, because there's various amounts of success, right? And various amounts of, of usage, you know what I'm saying? And and I mm-hmm. think if you, you tell people you can get Marcus Colston, Plaxico Burris, right? Style wide receiver, um, at this point when nobody's talking about him, I think that's a very intriguing conversation um, for scouts and just for NFL teams and NFL fans, right? Because they they are very, they were very valuable pieces. Marcus Coaston was a chain mover for the Saints. Plastico Burris operated as wide receiver one sometimes for the the Steelers and the Jet. I mean the uh, the Giants, right? So um, very interesting situation I, i'm intrigued by the guy man if you're talking about a six four six five guy that's a fluid move it should be an interesting situation yeah i think you know you know especially the, the horizontal plane those slants in breakers where you can where he's going to win the inside track and then body his his he's the his defender like if it's man-to-man coverage on that slant and you know that's it's we always talk about it right that third and third and fives keith you know a slant's coming and and and, and and if it's Indiana, you know it's probably going to Donovan because he's their wide receiver one, and he has that ability to not just win in the contact window, win the inside leverage, but then if you throw it out in front, he can use that body to post up like a power forward going into into the paint for that rebound. He can post you up and, and catch that catch that slant and get that first down and move the chains. It's just a guy that I really I'm interested to see how the season you know just kind of pans out for him. Um, like I said, he didn't play. He played majority on the outside, was, but is, he did. Is he a guy, DP, I want to ask you, is he a guy that yeah. you look at the field set and you'd be like, man, the transfer portal may have not been a bad idea for you, like to go somewhere to a more talented quarterback? Yeah, I think he should have. I, 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 I think they brought in the quarterback. Uh, I think they brought in somebody through the portal, but I think he was absolutely a guy that should have, like, you know, you think about Texas, right? And he's like, man, Texas lost Adonai. And they lost Xavier Worthy. They got they they brought and in Xavier Isaiah Bond. Yeah. 
And it's like, why not go to Texas? Why not go to a school that has the quarterback play? And not only the quarterback play, but there's Steve Sarkeesian calling plays and dialing up route concepts that'll put you in advantageous opportunities to where you're winning, right? Or, or not even just that, Michigan in the Big Ten. Because you think about what Michigan has. I forget all those teams coming over to the Big Ten. Washington coming to the Big Ten. Oregon coming to the Big Ten. Washington has Will Rogers, who's transferred from Mississippi State. Why wouldn't you go to Washington? And, and he's a better quarterback than what you have at Indiana, right? You bring in Dylan Gabriel to Oregon, and yeah. Oregon has Evan Stewart. They, and just they came to the throw team. it, yeah. They're going to throw the ball, man. And, and, and you know what I mean? That they, that's what they're going to do. So I would have loved to see him in one of those situations where the quarterback play. And like I said, I'm not saying he's a first round pick or anything like that. But when you're 6'5, 205, that can leap out the gym the way he can, play the ball at the catch point, can use that, that body type of frame. We've seen guys like this have success in the league. And I think about teams like the Miami Dolphins. You got all this speed, all these smaller receivers. You need a guy like that to where teams say, you know what? Maybe playing press man isn't the greatest thing in these situations because a guy like that who can play physical in the contact window, if he displaces our corner and stacks, that's a big explosive play down the field, right? Or that slant, that inbreaker, that crosser. Now you got a big guy also who can create those natural pick and rub routes for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle if you put them in the slot and run some wheel routes out of the slot, right? And the slot fades and different things like that. I think a guy like him, man, you know, Another name that came to my mind, almost a uh, Devonte Parker. Devonte Parker, when he, you know, early Devonte Parker, he was a successful receiver um, with, with the Dolphins. Where it's just like, yeah, did he separate a ton? Not really, but did he dominate at the catch point? One hundred percent, right? And we've seen we've seen guys with this type of skill set and build. I want to just see that improvement. I want to see how he handles because um, he's going to see some good corners, you know, in the Big Ten this year. You know what I mean? Prize sock coming over from Arizona to Washington. Um, I think they have Ohio State on the schedule again. And then, you know, Michigan with Will Johnson. You got Denzel Burke. It's a lot of talented DBs in the Big Ten. You know what I mean? Iowa, same thing. Can you go out there and win on the island against these high caliber uh, corners and man-to-man -man coverage and separate enough to where your quarterback can get you the ball and get you the ball effectively? I think there's some. Uh, I think there's some run at the catch upside with him too. So he's a guy that to me is like uh, I will put I will put the spotlight on him as a a um a, a rank climber or, or a big board climber, a positional rank climber. Whereas like if he has a, a much better season, 1,200 yards, ten plus touchdowns, you're like man, Donovan McCulley had a big year and he showcased some of the things we wanted to see. I just need you to separate as an adequate be an adequate separator at your size i'm not asking you to be jerry judy i'm not asking you to be amari cooper just be adequate enough donovan people's jones those big body receivers that know nico collins is another name that came to mind now he's taller than nico i think nico's more like six two six three while he's listed at six five taller longer arm and ta longer limb guy but i think there's there's room for him to 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 really make some noise this draft season he's going to be tested with these dbs in the big ten Hey, I'm excited to get eyes on <clears throat> I'm excited to get eyes on him, DP, and, and see, you know, what type of player he is, man. I think we went through a couple of exciting guys, right? Where the variants for what they could do. Um, it's up to having a big year this upcoming year, man. That's why you talk about the scouting process, man, because it's not a one-time situation. This is a marathon, this is not a sprint, DP. But listen, man, that wraps up another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to say shout out to our everyday. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at the talent code that right there my guy my co-host mr damian parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl like we always like to say man y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back go subscribe and follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episodes as soon as it is available thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our every day is on tomorrow's episode the scouting notebook scouting notebook opens and i'm turning to the page of Will Johnson, that elite cornerback from the Michigan Wolverines. So we're going to talk about this and more on tomorrow. So, so come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.